Right, here is the last section in which we will be able to say something about pricing without uh, mathematical models. And this is going to be about options. But for options, unlike forwards, futures and swaps, we actually do need mathematical models for, uh, num like to get a number for the price of an option. Uh, what we will be able to do here without mathematical models is to get some bounds on the prices, some inequalities for the prices of options. So let's see, let's see how that works. And move to the next slide. A uh, bit of notation here. I'm going to consider uh, vanilla options, European call and puts, uh, with a price at time small t, where small t stands for today. Uh, for a call, it's a lowercase c, and for a put, it's a lowercase p. Uh, it's here. Uh, for American call and put prices, it's going to be uppercase, capital C of t and capital P of t uh, denotes price of the value of American call and American put options at time t before maturity. Right, so I have several relations here. Some are going to be easier, some uh, harder. Uh, and the first one says that the price of a European call at any time t cannot be larger, is less or equal to the price of the corresponding American call, and it has to be, which has to be, both of them have to be less than the, the price of the underlying at time t. Okay? Uh, so why is this? Well, this is the European version, this is the uh, American version. Well, in American version, uh, remember the, the definition, uh, the, uh, the buyer can exercise at any time uh, before maturity. In, in the European version, the buyer can only exercise at maturity, only at that time. So definitely, buyer has uh, more options, more uh, uh, flexibility, and therefore the American option uh, has to be has to have at least as much value as the European version, right? In terms of uh, both of them being uh, less than uh, the un price of the underlying. Well, that's uh, let me just move here to the ball pen. So, well, that's just because the the payoff. Remember, our call option is a maximum. I'm gonna write here maximum of uh, s. So I'm gonna use tau here minus k and zero. Uh, where tau is the, if it's an American option, it's an exercise time. If it's a European, uh, which can be anything before maturity and uh, time of exercise, exercise time. Well, for the, for the uh, European option, that's always going to be capital T. Uh, so this is a Greek letter tau. We're using a lot of Greek letters. That's standard in, uh, option, uh, in option practice and theory, uh, using Greek letters. I'm not inventing this notation, it's a standard notation. Right? So this is always less than, this is always less than S of tau. Right? So uh, no matter when I exercise this option, uh, I cannot get more than the price of the underlying. Uh, so the price of this, uh, the price of the option cannot be higher than the price of the underlying. If it was, I would sell the option by the underlying get arbitrage. Okay? So it's simply, it's simply that it's payoff. No matter when it's exercised, the payoff is always less or equal to the payoff of the underlying. All right, so the, this, the first relation, relation one, uh, is, uh, is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, and let's see next. Let me just paintbrush here. So similarly for the put option, again, the European price, price for the European put cannot be larger than the price of the American put for the same reason as before. And then the, uh, both of them have to be less, less than the, uh, uh, than, than the uh, strike price. Uh, well, that's again because for the put we have that bound. The uh, the uh, the uh, let me just switch here again to the ballpoint pen. So for the put, it's going to be a maximum of, of k minus s of tau. All right, that's the uh, n zero. So n n zero. Well, that's always less than k. So, 
and no matter when it's exercised, it's less than k, so the price cannot be larger than k. In fact, for the European version, uh, what we are claiming here in relation 3, it uh, actually has to be less than, than discounted uh, k, discounted strike price. Uh, why is that? Because with the European version, I can only exercise at maturity, so if at maturity the price is less than k, Today, the price has to be e less or equal than the pri today's price of k, and today's price of k is simply the present value of k, which is, if you are using continuously compounded interest rate, it's just this, okay, just discounted k here. Right? That's for the European version. For the American version, I cannot know that quite because uh, you know, it can be exercised right away, so there's no discounting if it's exercised right away. I don't know when it's going to be exercised. So, for the American version, I can only say that it's, uh, the, the price is less than the strike price. For the European version, the price has to be less than the discounted strike price. Alright, so th those first three inequalities and bounds for options uh, were more or less straightforward. Let me look at relation four which is a little bit less straightforward. So the relation, relation 4 says that the price of a European call at time t has to be larger than the price of the underlying minus discounted strike price if the underlying pays no dividends. Okay, I'm gonna, it's different with dividends. Uh, maybe I'll do some examples here or you will have them in the, in the homework assignments. Uh, but uh, without dividends, this is, this is what we are claiming. European call price has to be larger than underlying price of the underlying, the price of the underlying minus discounted strike price. I'm going to show this in the same way I was uh, doing uh, uh, no arbitrage arguments before for forwards and uh, other things. Uh, so uh, let's assume that this is not the case, and let's construct arbitrage. Okay? So let's assume that the European call is strictly less than uh, S minus discounted strike. And I'm going to move things around. I don't like this minus sign, so uh, otherwise I can get confused what I have to buy, what I have to sell in the arbitrage, no, uh, in the arbitrage strategy. So, so let's move the, 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 this to the other side and assume that it's thick less here. So let's suppose that price of the European call plus discounted strike price is strictly less than the price of the underlying. Okay? So the, always the same logic. Uh, sell expensive by cheap, so sell short the the asset, and uh, if you do that, and if this is true, if this strict inequality is true, I have enough money to buy uh, European coal, and uh, and buying cash means just deposit this much into the bank at rate R. Okay? So I have enough money. I sell this guy. I get S of T. I buy a uh, European call for C of T and I put this kind of K in the bank and I still have extra money left. Now, and I wanted to show that this extra money will always be there and in the future I will have no losses. So at least I'm making this positive extra money from the beginning, uh, which would mean arbitrage. Okay? And then I will conclude this cannot hold, the, uh, instead this has to, has to hold. All right, so if we do that, uh, we only have to check what happens at maturity because there are no dividends here and there is no uh, American options here. So there's no payments between lowercase t and capital T. There is only payments at capital T. So I only have to check what happens at capital T. There are two relevant scenarios, uh, only two I have to look at. Either the call option is going to be in the money or out of the money. Or either S of T is going to be at maturity strictly larger than K or let's say less or equal to K. Right? So first, if the, if the stock, if the underlying price is larger than the K at maturity, uh, then uh, I, I exercise the option. It's in the money. I exercise my option that I bought uh, the call option. Uh, which means I'm going to buy S for K. And can I do that? Well, I, I have K in the bank because I put a discounted K 
initially in the bank, it's going to grow at the rate r exactly to k. Right? So it's going to uh, increase to k, so I have k in the bank, and I pay, exercise the option, pay k, get one share of the underlying, and uh, with that share, I close my short position, because I was short one share. Right? I sold short one share, so I now get it, I close my short position. And that's it. I still have that extra money from the beginning. So here I have a positive profit. And the other case is if at maturity the, the underlying price is less or equal to K, then I don't exercise the option. I get zero from the option. Uh, I still have this short position in the, in the underlying, so I have to buy the stock. But, but I can do that because in this scenario, K, which is what I have in the bank, is more than, uh, is larger or equal to the pr spot price of the underlying at maturity. So if that happens, I can buy uh, one share. Uh, I have enough. I have K in the bank. K, bank. K is larger than this. Uh, I can buy it. Uh, there we go. Uh, I again have that one share when I buy it, uh, and I can close my short position again. Okay. So in either case, no matter what happens in the future, I'm okay. I have no losses, and I still have that positive profit from the beginning, arbitrage. So this cannot hold. Instead, this has to hold. Uh, relation 4 has to hold. Th theoretically, right? In practice, there might be a slight uh, deviations from this due to market imperfections. All right, a similar relation for puts. A European price of a European put has to be larger than discounted strike price minus uh, the price of the underlying. So it's same logic. I'm not going to uh, go through the uh, proof. Uh, leave, I'll leave that to, to you. All right. So that's that's the that those are the first uh, five relations. Let's go on.